Hey guys, so are you like other practitioners who are a little bit confused about the bacteroidetes to firmicutes ratio that was just recently added to the GI map test? If you watch this video, I'm going to help you become unstumped by helping you understand the meaning of this ratio and what it means to your clients. If you guys want functional health training and all the nerdy ins and outs of functional lab interpretation, plus the online marketing strategies to help you get in front of more people and get more clients, make sure to click the bell and subscribe to my channel so that you get notified every time I post a video on Thursdays. So you are not alone if you're a little bit confused by the phyla microbiota se section on the GI map. I've been getting a lot of questions about it lately, how to interpret each individual marker and also the ratio and what that actually means for your clients. So watch this video and I'm going to teach you exactly how to do this. And don't worry, I've seen thousands of these tests, probably hundreds in the past year. So I know exactly how to interpret this and how to teach you how to do it too. Hey guys, so first let's start by discussing what are the phyla microbiota. So the bacteroidetes, which is this one right here, um, this is a gram negative type of bacteria, whereas Firmicutes is a bunch of bacteria that are gram positive, okay? And this just basically refers to their cell walls. Gram positive do not have an outer cell membrane, um, whereas the gram positive do. Okay, so that basically means that when crystal violet dye is added to these cells, the gram negative bacteria can retain the dye, whereas the gram positive do not. Okay, so these are actually the most abundant bacteria in the body. They dominate the entire GI tract, the nose, the mouth, the throat, and the colon. And most of your normal uh, flora are going to fall into one of these two categories. Okay. And if you want more info on the normal bacteria flora, make sure to check out my video titled Normal Intestinal Flora on the GI map, which ones are good and which ones are bad if you want to know more information on these normal bacteria flora. Okay, so what matters with these two is actually the balance between them, okay? Um, and so if one looks high or one looks low or both look low or both look high, typically this is going to re represent an imbalance, which is likely due to a dysbiosis. Um, and possibly the presence of other pathogenic organisms, which you might see elsewhere on the test. And there's a very high likelihood that you will see infections, okay? So a lot of the research based around the Firmicutes to Bacteroidetes ratio is actually in relation to obesity and being overweight because having a high Firmicutes to bacteria, Bacteroidetes ratio can actually cause increased calorie extraction from food, fat deposition, inflammation, and even impaired insulin sensitivity. Um, this can be caused by a bacterial dysbiosis, so an imbalance with those flora, uh, by poor diet, and even things like low stomach acid. So comment below and let me know, have you seen an elevated ratio in yourself or on your clients? I would love to know because I actually haven't been seeing a ton of elevated ratios lately. So I know that the lab says that the ratio should be below one, but I've seen a lot of these tests in the past year since they added this marker, which was in January, 2018. And it's very, I don't think I've seen one ratio above one. And it's actually rare that I see anything above 0.2. So from my own experience, when I start to see this ratio 0.2 and above, so you can see this one's getting pretty close, I start to pay attention. And if my client is struggling with obesity, if they're overweight or they have very resistant weight loss, then this imbalance between Firmicutes and Bacteroidetes, I get a little tongue tied on that one, um, that might actually be driving the issue, okay? So what is the solution if you do end up with an imbalance? So if you see either of these individual markets, markers as high or low, you definitely want to be considering some sort of probiotic. Um, and if you see an elevated Firmicutes to Bacteroidetes ratio, um, what can you do to actually address this? So if... Um, so you definitely want to be addressing the other infections um, and, you know, if there's parasites, if there's bacterial infections, if there's yeast, if there's viruses, if there's H. pylori, I would definitely start by addressing those. And you're also going to want to use a proper probiotic. So if the ratio is high, a bifidobacteria supplement like Clear Labs um, Factor 4 and coupled with Saccharomyces boulardii, which is a beneficial yeast strain, that can actually be helpful at reducing the ratio. And you're gonna to wanna to be careful with any supplements or probiotics that contain high amounts of lactobacillus or bacillus because that can actually elevate the ratio, okay? 
But, and I mentioned this in one of my other videos on the normal bacteria flora, but probiotics are simply a support. They're not gonna fix the issue. Um, and that's because there is billions and trillions of microorganisms in your gut and you can't replicate that with a probiotic. So use your probiotic as a support and make sure you are addressing diet, lifestyle, and any other infections that might be present on the GI map. So now that you understand how to read the bacteroidetes to firmicutes ratio, you might be wondering, well, what the heck do I do with the rest of the GI map panel? So I've created a really awesome cheat sheet for practitioner where I basically walk you through all of these markers, what they mean and what they are associated with. So if you want to grab that cheat sheet, just click the link below. And if you like this video, make sure to let me know, leave me a comment, like it, share it with your fellow health nerds and subscribe to my channel so that I know you like this content and so that I will continue to make videos just like this. All right. Thank you. I'll see you in the next video.